Nearly a century and a half ago, the big news about encoding and playing back sequential information, the forerunner of movies, was all about those horses. Over the years, the technology advanced to motion picture film, and then to tinier and tinier videotapes and flash media. And we thought that was gee whiz stuff. Well, think again. Today's latest news about encoding and playing back sequential information is again about those horses, except these movies were encoded in and played back from DNA in living bacterial cells. Uh, to be totally honest, uh, the point is not to store videos in bacteria. <laughs> um, we used uh, the video because it's a, it's a good example of a complex um, piece of information that has both many parts to it, that is many pixel values, and a time component. So it's organized over time. And so it was a, a good way for us to test whether the uh, CRISPR adaptation system that we're using could actually acquire enough information that we could go in and sequence the bacteria after we had encoded it and reconstruct the, the movie. And so it, it's, a, it's kind of a, a, a way for us to push the technology forward uh, and understand how we will build and analyze data as we are scaling up to um, hopefully eventually do biological recording. Uh, my background is actually in neuroscience. And so I was trying to understand how uh, different cells in the developing brain would become very distinct types of neurons. Uh, so they all start as you know, a, a cell with the same genetic material, but over time, um, they acquire these very distinct, we call cell fates, so the different types of neurons. And uh, it's very difficult uh, from a technological standpoint to understand how that happens in the developing brain because it's happening for many, many, many cells at once and all kind of locked away within the brain. And, and so to get access to the, the biological events that are happening uh, is is quite difficult. And so what I imagined was if we had a way of recording biological events and storing them in the genome, then I wouldn't have to, as an experimenter, go in and either be watching the cells or be kind of disrupting the brain in order to get information out, which then disrupts the entire developmental process. The, the overall, overall idea is to, to use these kind of molecular recorders to, to gain access to um, biological phenomena that, that we just can't we can't see in real time. And, um, you know, I was making reference to, to the development of the brain because that's one place where it's, it's something that happens both over time and in a biological system that's very difficult to get access to, um, to actually watch the cell biology occur. So if we were able to uh, implement a molecular recorder to, to catalog uh, biological events over time, that's the type of system that, that really would, I think, um, a molecular recorder would change, the, fundamentally change the type of data that we would, we would pull out of the system. Right, right now, we are, we're really piloting uh, the idea of encoding information into the genome as a way of, of storing information in live cells. And so, you know, it's, it's in bacteria. Um, it is, we are currently supplying the information. Um, and, and over time, we really would want to kind of unlock this technology, be able to put it into any cell type, and uh, to hook it up to biology. You know, it is now functioning in bacteria, and so there are other things you could think about, uh, like having um, living bacteria that are are actually sensing things in their environment and recording them into their own genome, and so they could be kind of these these biological uh, recording devices, sense and recording devices, and, and so. Um, they could be in a, out out in the environment or or just recording things that are happening within the cell and and capturing them storing them in, in their genome so that at any point we can go back and and recover that information uh, this technology definitely has applications for experimental biology so it can be used as a tool for for experimental biologists to gather data from cells in the future um, but it also potentially has uh, has applications in the medical field where a, uh, a cell has privileged access to certain components of your body. Uh, and if a cell could be uh, gathering information and recording it into its own genome, then uh, that cell could be 
perhaps even living within your body and getting that information over time. And uh, a, a, a clinician could go in and sequence out the genomic locus that has that information and see what's been going on uh, previously. So we're looking at a, an image of a, of a human hand. We chose a human hand because it was one of the first images that um, people put onto the natural world. And so since we were encoding images here into the natural world in a different way, we decided to uh, recapitulate one of those images. And uh, what, what you're seeing is um, the source image which is uh, what we started with. We then encoded all of the pixel values into uh, the nucleotides of DNA, distributed them over a number of strands of DNA, and then put them into bacteria, where the bacteria acquired those sequences and captured them into their own genome. Uh, after the cells grew for a while, we then sequenced their, their genomes and were able to reconstruct the image based on the, the sequencing of the um, nucleotides that were inserted. And so then what you're looking at is also the reconstructed image, image from the uh, bacteria after they were sequenced. Uh, here we are looking at uh, an image of a horse or a, a movie of a horse running. Uh, this was originally taken by Edward Moybridge. Um, and uh, again, it was one of the first uh, moving images that was made. And so we thought that that was an appropriate thing. Uh, to encode, and and what we did here was, again, for each frame, break down the pixel values um, and encode them in the nucleotides of DNA across many different strands, um, about, you know, 100 strands per for each frame of the image. And then in this case, we delivered those strands to that living bacteria over time. So uh, each frame was delivered on a, on a different day um, over the course of five days. And then, uh, you know, we let those cells grow for a little while, and then we sequenced their genomes, and we were able to reconstruct not only each of the frames, but the order of each of the frames, because uh, the, the molecular recording system that we're using captures the timing information of, of different molecular events. The next step would be to hook it up to actual biology, all right? So right now, we were supplying information in the form of synthesized DNA. In the future, we want that information to come from biological events that are happening within the cell. And so that's the next step.